Mr. Urban Wall Street, young producers, where are they now? For the last 12 years, it's been my mission to inspire young individuals in our community, black men, black women, Latino men, Latino women, that may not have thought that they could become great. Our children are the future, we know this. So I was blessed by the creator to meet these two young men when they were in the 10th grade, right here in Harlem. One at Academy for Social Action and one at Harlem Children's Zone. First, I want to introduce you to my brother, Neville, Neville Brown. I met him in 10th grade. He's the, he's the lead in the uh, video that you're going to be talking to the director and the creative in a moment. But I want to talk to Neville right quick because I haven't seen him in a moment since I connected him where he was actually working at Harlem Children's Zone when I bought the program there. He was already grown by that time. Neville. Yeah, my brother, what's going on? What's going on? It's a pleasure. It's a beautiful thing. So listen, man, listen, it's been a moment. It has, but 10th grade, I remember my boy Young uh, Nav. Yeah, young I was Nav. young, right. So tell us, when Miss the principal at ASA came to you and said, listen, we're going to do a program, we got some production, who wants to act? What was your thoughts, Neville? Well, first and foremost, I always thought about acting and trying to do things like that, you know, since I've been young, you know, I've always thought about it, always wanted to do something like that. So it was a great opportunity hearing it. I was nervous as hell, to be quite honest, because I was like, man, I never acted before. I don't know how this is going to work. You know what I'm saying? And then when she introduced me to you, I was like, oh, all right. And you were very, you told us like, yo, you know what? Just be natural, you know, be yourself, you know, don't worry about the camera too much, you know, just let it flow out, you know, shake the nerves off and you're going to do your thing, you know. You taught us a few things in the process of us doing this, and I just thought, like, this was going to be a great opportunity to get myself into a world that I always wanted to be in, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, bet. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it I'm gonna do it my way, and I'm going to do it the right way, you know what I'm saying? So it was a great opportunity to learn this from young, you know what I'm saying? I was in 10th grade. I was young. I ain't had no face here, nothing, you know what I'm saying? I was nervous, but it was dope. It was a dope opportunity, you know what I'm saying? So I was I was very, very hype about it, and I was very ready for it, you know? Now, one of the things I pride myself is showing all young people that they can do it, you know? And so what was it like, you know, because a lot of times people would think they would see the productions, and they thought that maybe I wrote it and I made it happen. But who were the, who were the brains behind all those scripts? Never who was doing the work? That was all us. You know, that was all the kids from every school that you went to, you know, including mine. You know, when you were at ASA, you told us, like, you know what? You guys are going to be the producers. You guys are going to run your whole your, run your whole movies and run your whole short films. And I'm like, well, we going to do it? That's dope, you know? So you told us write the script, you know, we wrote the scripts, we created them, they were all based off real, real world scenarios, you know what I'm saying, so it was real things going on, you know, we was young, you know, we teenagers, but you know, you're going in through puberty, you're going through a lot of peer pressure, things of that nature, so we wrote real world things that were going on in our community and around us, you know what I'm saying, and we just followed through with it, we created it, and you taught us how to do it, you taught us how to work the cameras, taught us how to write the scripts, and you just sat, you sat back and let us, you know, be the young producers that we are, you know what I'm saying? So it was dope. So what was that experience? Because a lot of times, you know, I want to emphasize, you know, when you're young, the teachers are always telling you, right? And I yeah. always say, listen, this is not a program where I'm telling you what to do. Yeah. This is where you're going to tell me what we're going to do. So what was it like to have that freedom at such a young age? I think that's what a lot of kids always usually want, you know, because they always telling us, oh, you know, you can't do this, you can't do this. So the fact that we actually got to be the person that was in charge at that moment, like, listen, I want it like this. I want you to be right there. I want you to be right here. I want I want you guys to come down this block. I want you guys to come down the steps. You know, you guys going to hug. You know, it was, it was a great opportunity to get the feel of some type of control and running a situation that's going to be great, you know, for us. So it was, it was that, I, I like that experience. I think that experience was really dope, you know, and it taught us how to have that good leadership quality, you know what I'm saying? The leadership quality to, to do your own thing and just to be independent, you know? Self-independence is always good. So to have that independency at a young age, it gave us the, the energy and the motivation to be better, you know what I'm saying, as we got older. So that was dope, you know? So Nev was always, he was always a character, and always a good character, very positive kid, he wanted to act and things to tell jokes. So when you got the call, you know, we're going to meet our brother Mike, and Mike Green, a.k.a. Mike Mary Productive, you know what I'm saying? When you got the call, like, listen, I'm about to work on something. Um, tell me, how did you know Micah from school? How did you know Micah? And then when you got that call, how did you feel? So how did you know Micah? Well, me, I met Micah, that was my brother. I met him when I was in Harlem Children's Zone. I was first in Harlem Children's Zone first. Then, as I got older and I went to high school, I went to ASA. But Michael was always a brother of mine from around the way, so, you know, we linked up. You know, special shout-out to Mike Mary Productions. That's his company. He's going to tell you about that. That's a dope company. 
it was an honor for him to give me the call. You know what I'm saying? And at first, like I said, at first, I wasn't the person who was doing it because I already had something else in the works when we already had some other opportunity that we was going to kick in together. And, you know, he put me in it and it was dope. You know, I appreciate it. I'm humbled by it, honored by it. I was excited, to be honest, to have my first acting gig as I'm older now. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little bit more mature. The growth is there. You know, I'm a little bit more outspoken, you know, a little bit more char charismatic. You know what I'm saying? So it was dope to get that energy and get my positive energy on the field to make people laugh and just be a, a certain person besides myself and in acting in an acting sense you know what i'm saying so i think that was a great opportunity you know i appreciate them and you know it was just dope all around you know we got we got some we got a lot of stuff we had some good memories with that with this new thing going on so it's gonna be dope you guys gotta definitely check it out mm -hmm. so listen you're gonna hear from my man mike micah green in a moment mike mary productions but my man never used to do something when we wrapped up in the 10th grade he did this move it was like yeah right like, yeah y'all yeah. keep watching this is my young boy mike mary productions yo the feature my man micah green keep watching soul searching the video the visual if you don't know you're gonna find out keep watching here's kidnapped dollars and this is tati and this is erica and this is mary and this is king me <laughs> yeah we represent 903 you already know how we doing it represent 903 yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, let me just let y'all know, yeah, like, we want to thank, want to thank Wall Street Productions because we're about to get, about to get it popping. So, new work from right that knowing us. That's how we doing it out here. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> I'm miserable. I'm selling my own people out. Stop! So you know what it is. We're back, Mr. Urban Wall Street. Urban Wall Street young producers, where are they now? And I'm with the star attraction for today's feature, my brother Mike Green, Mike Mary Productions, one of Harlem's finest. And we're standing right here on the corner of 124th Street and Frederick Douglass Boulevard in Harlem, where they're from, where they raise, where these streets they run. But Magic Johnson Theaters, you see it behind it. Magic Theaters was a very important, um, very important spot for this young brother right here, and he's gonna let you know. First thing first, Michael, what's good, baby? Hey, what's up, what's up? Thank you for uh, selecting me to be a part of Urban Wall Street, man. Definitely in the spotlight, I feel the love. Definitely honorable to be here. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Now, unlike Neville, Neville actually was in Young Producers and he went through the program, but you you and I introduction was a little bit different. How did, how did you come to meet me, Michael? Uh, I was 14 and you came to my school, uh, Promise Academy at the time. Um, you came uh, explaining what you do. That was for career day. And I was just, you know, so inspired, you know, cause I always wanted to get into production, but you also gave an insight about it in the entrepreneurship aspect. So I was just like, why not connect? You know, my slogan is say less and do more. And you're a person who's actually doing the talk, doing the walk instead of just doing the talking. So, you know, I was very honored and wanted to connect with you. Right. And so, right, and, and, and you were the one of the few who gave me your number. And I realized I've had it all this time. And that's not the norm, you know, a young kid give you his number, like, hey, but you, you maintain that and you always follow me. So I loved it. So we're standing in front of Magic Theaters and you said, um, I asked you before, I said, Mike, when we do this, um, is there any particular spot that you want to, uh, you, you know, want to, want to represent. And you said Magic Theaters. Let's, let's, can we do something in front of Magic Theaters? What is it about Magic Theaters that made you want to do, do your spotlight here? Uh, what had me want to do it, uh, spotlight at Magic Johnson Theater was the fact that uh, me and my grandmother, she raised me. So every Saturday morning, we used to watch movies from like 11 a.m. to like 7, 8 o'clock at night. We used to get our blimpy sandwich, sneak it in there. And when one movie's done, we'll go to the next theater. And when I used to watch these movies, it was always from like, not a fan point of view, like not to uh, enjoy it. It was like, damn, this scene, they could have did this or that. Or me picturing myself in the scene and how I act. So like, even um, Space Jam is my favorite movie to this day when Michael Jordan stuck his arm out the end of his stretch long. Like, um, I tried to do that with a basketball when I was younger, but I realized like my arm wasn't stretching, but that just goes to show how art influences you. You know, so that's what made me want to get into production as well. So we got Mike Mary Productions. What's the inspiration behind that name, brother? I love it. Uh, Mike is my name for sure. My real name is Michael, but ever since I was younger, my grandmother, my father called me Mike. Everyone still called me Mike. 
and Mary's my grandmother who passed away name. So it's our name put together. And she's, she's a part of everything I do. I told her I was gonna keep her legacy going and the letter I wrote, and I put it in her casket, you know, on her funeral. So yeah, to this day, I'm still carrying a legacy to my time for Yeah. So now we get to soul searching. Soul Searching is your visual, incredible visual. Congratulations on that, brother. I love to see it. And you tapped your brother Neville, my brother Nev. What made you tap Nev? What was the know? How, how did that conversation happen? Man, it came about because I was supposed to actually have another friend of mine do it, but um, that didn't fall through. Um, and Nev, me and Nev, we also got another visual that came out prior, but it's animation. He was the voiceover. And we got something else that's in the works, but I was just like, you know what? Why not? There's no ceiling to success nor what he do. And I feel like he was always an actor before I even started, you know, doing this production thing. And I was just like, I know it'll be organic, so why not, you know, work with someone who's organic and someone I have a, good, a great rapport with. So that's how I came about, and it, we made magic. And how, and, and how, did, how did, did he deliver? Yeah, he delivered, he deli He beyond delivered. He exceeded all expectations of, of me, of the person who writes, you know? So I think it turned out well, and you know, the people enjoyed it too. I feel like we, we gained a lot of traction with it, so. That's right. So that visual is soul searching. Um, what what was the inspiration or the motivation, if you will, behind soul searching? Uh, the motivation behind soul searching, um, the actual visual, um, because we'll talk about the song later. But the actual visual is the fact that African Americans are dying senselessly, you know, behind the hands of police, you know, and during that time when George Floyd died, Breonna Taylor died, I saw a lot of African American cops, male and uh women because yeah male and women talking about it and they just you know didn't feel like they was like no but they gotta do this because this is a job so i feel like a part of them feel like they was selling themselves out because of the things they were saying you know so i was just like i want to bring it to light and bring it from an african-american standpoint you know what's going on so that's how that visual was inspired mm, yeah. so in a minute listen Micah green listen soul search is a beautiful situation we're in harlem my brother nev brown but in a moment these two are gonna do what they do, and you're gonna learn some more behind the song, the story, soul searching. It's a lot to it, but my man Neville's gonna interview his partner right here. Um, they're gonna let you know. So keep watching. Young producers, where are they now? Where? In Harlem, doing great things, prepared for 2021 and beyond. Mike Mary Productions, Urban Wall Street. Keep watching. I got plans for these young brothers too.